Okay, it's time. Let's talk about my best books of 2022. Hello, hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Smriti and I love reading books. In the year 2022, I read about 132 books to be exact um, and I loved a lot of them. Uh, and I am here to talk to you about some of my favorites, the absolute best of the best. But before I begin talking about that, I need to tell you that I have a separate video altogether about my favorite translated books. So this is not a complete list if you do not see that video. So I would highly recommend that you see that because it has some of my favorite books of all time on that list. Um, and I hope that you get some great recommendations from that video as well as this one because I'm just so excited to share with you some of my favorite books of last year. It was just absolutely a spectacular reading year um, in terms of just like the variety of things that I've read. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to talk to you about my honorable mentions. Um, and these honorable mentions are spectacular books, amazing books. Um, but I don't think they are going to be in my favorites of all time sort of books. Okay, like the ones which are in my top 13. I could not choose a top 10. I just couldn't do it. Um, there was no way I could remove like one book and like keep it on the other end or whatever. It just it wasn't possible for me. So I have my favorite 13. Um, and then I have I think six other honorable mentions which were stunning books. Stunning books but I personally don't think that I will keep them in my all-time favorite list if that makes any sense to you so yeah that's basically what we're gonna do um I'm going to talk to you about them very briefly because there are 19 books to talk about um and this intro has gone on for about two minutes already so let's cut the crap and talk about the book so we start off the honorable mentions with Shit Cassandra Saw by Gwen E. Kirby this was a book that I read in the beginning of the year and honestly I was just dumb founded while reading it because I was in awe of the author's like creativity like she showed feminine rage and anger but as well as just like the things that we go through in just such an interesting sort of way and it wasn't just about feminine rage it was also about like helplessness and humanity and like it was just written in such a interesting and weird way for example this one man is talking about like his decaying marriage through a yelp review there is another like instance where we see these short snippets of these women who get like these random superpowers of cockroaches and they like seek revenge or like they fight back um against the patriarchy and like all the bullshit that they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis be it like cat callers or people just generally like saying stupid things to them at work and all of that sort of stuff i just thought that it was just so incredible and such a fresh look at things so this was definitely a huge 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 um hit for me personally um and i think more people should read this book because it was absolutely fantastic and i can't wait to see more from Gwenny Kirby. The next honorable mention is a short book, a very short book, it's about 61 pages and it's The English Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt and this is a very short book about this young 17 year old who's writing about her journey and about her parents, especially her mum. And then we basically understand through this that she's actually writing a book and we get like interrupted by her conversations with like her um, editor and stuff like that and we understand that something terrible had happened and which is why she's been asked to write this book but this character like in this book Marjorie I think her name is or uh, Margaret or something like that I'm not too sure is just like such an amazing character like I was fist bumping and like giggling and laughing throughout this thing and just like I loved the way she dealt with things and I don't want to say too more because it is a 61 page book but like I was just like this is amazing <laughs> I love this woman um I need to read more from her point of view and I was just I I just thought that it was a short but very very well done book um and it gave me a lot of joy so I had to include it on this list next is small things like these by Claire Keegan this is a book that I have spoken about um at nauseam I think now um and it is a book that was shortlisted for the booker um and it is a very short book 
So small things like these, shortlisted for the booker and it's a short book. Uh, but essentially this book is about this guy in like the 90s, I think, or the 80s in Ireland. Um, and he sees something while delivering like coal at this nunnery of sorts. Um, and it's how he deals with that situation. But before that, we get to know lots about him and like just his personality and his upbringing and like all the things that lead to that decision um, and I just thought that it was very well done in terms of not only telling you about this thing that happened which was like a true story uh, but also like understanding this one person now when I read it initially I didn't quite like it but then I it's just a book that has stuck with me through the time that I've read it it's been like five six seven months maybe now um, and it has really really stuck with me and I'm in awe of how well, she can write. So yeah, that definitely has to be on the honorable mentions list. Uh, next on this list of uh, honorable mentions, it has to be notes on an execution. This book confused the crap out of me because I was, uh, I don't know, it speaks a lot about uh, capital punishment. It speaks about um, whether people can change whether they deserve a second chance um, and it's basically told through the perspective of the serial killer who's on death row um, he is going to be executed in the next 12 hours and we get to hear from him as the time goes by but we also get to hear from three other women in his life so one is his mother second is um, the person who caught him but also he had like a previous sort of uh, relationship of sorts with her um, and then the third is the sister of a person that he killed and we get to hear more about his life as well as the people who were affected by him um, and we get to understand various things and this book is so good because it is so well written so genius in terms of its writing um, but also just like makes you question a lot of things and I think this book deserves to be read um, and like deserves to be like discussed more than anything else um, so yeah so I really really appreciated what it made me think um, and just the beautiful writing as well in this book it was just fantastically written um, and really kudos. The next book is Trust by Hernan Diaz. This was a book that was also long listed for the book of this year and it confused me but also I was in awe of the writing again because this book is one like four books in one book essentially um we are essentially getting to know about the same people through different perspectives and through different like sort of um uh accounts essentially uh, and it is just so well done so we start off with getting to know about these um, really really rich uh, people in the US and how they made money one is this person who's like a stock guy and the other one is like his wife and we basically get to understand their story but it's told through four different accounts and I just think that the idea of hearing um, a person's story through different people and getting to understand who tells the best sort of story and whose story it is to tell it just like that concept really really intrigues me um, and just like I find that so interesting so this book really did that and also I really have to give kudos to Hernan Diaz for writing four very different sort of books you know like the the way the writing was was just so different in all three um especially the second one really irritated me so if you're going to read this book and you're put off by the second part don't worry <laughs> there's a reason why so yeah i i just was like in awe of that in particular and um yeah this was definitely had to be there in my honorable mentions all right and the last of the honorable mentions is dawn by octavia butler this was a stunning book um, and I I want to put this in honorable mentions only because I am not much of a sci-fi sort of reader this book is about this girl who is found in space like she basically wakes up and she's in a spaceship she doesn't know what has happened and essentially she gets to know that the earth essentially was like detonated by each other because there was a nuclear war and there were a few humans that survived and this alien ship came and like rescued some of them and I've put them into this deep sleep till they could like regenerate earth of sorts um and then they have their own things that they want etc but it's just the way this book is brilliant is the way that it explores humanity and the way that people like 
sort of react to things differently. Um, it's just such an amazing character study on people and like just humanity and how we deal with things and how we react to things and just like I just thought that it was so brilliant in terms of that the writing as well was just absolutely stunning and um, I need to read more from this series um, again as I said I am not a science fiction person at all I do not like like aliens and like you know all of that sort of stuff but this just was such a brilliant book in terms of like characters and like understanding how people would react and like all of that sort of stuff it was just absolutely stunning and just so well done so I had to put this in my honorable mentions list and now we get to the best of the best the top of the top my very favorites all time forever hits um Let's get into it. So the first is, as in number 13, is uh, My Sister the Serial Killer by Okinye Brit. Well, you will see the name here. But um, I loved this book. This is essentially a book that is about a girl who is murdering people, murdering her lovers. Um, and she calls in her sister to help her out because her sister is a nurse. Um, and yeah, essentially then she goes and sees um, this doctor who's at her sister's like hospital. And uh, is like, ooh, this guy's cool. Um, and then her sister's like, oh no, she's going to murder him because she murders all her lovers. Um, and then it's just that sort of story. So it's a story about love. It's a story about family. It's a story about um, just like how you deal with responsibility and familial ties and like um yeah it's it's more of a character study than like a thrilling sort of book where you see people killing people and all of that it's not that at all um i also thought that the writing was just like funny and witty um and just like it, it was a it was a nice surprise for me in terms of the writing i really like the way the author wrote so um I don't know, this book, when I first read it, I was like, oh, it's it's fine. But it's a book and, like, lines from that book have really, like, stayed with me. Um, so I think I'm definitely going to have to put this in my best of the best. So it's number 13 on my best books of 2022. The most loving parents and relatives commit murder with smiles on their faces. They force us to destroy the person we really are, a subtle kind of murder. Number 12 on this list is the only non-fiction in this list, uh, but I have more in my translated list, so please go check that out, please. Um, but this one is Indian Summer by Alex von Tunzelman. This is a history book about essentially the summer before the partition of India, Pakistan, and then Bangladesh in 1947, and the main people in it. And this book was um, a really fresh sort of book for me because I've never really read history, but which was very like character focus which was very people focused about what were they doing what were they like so we have Nehru we have Gandhi we have the Mountbatten's we have Mama Jinnah we have all of these people um, and we get to understand more about them as people and how that may have contributed to the things that happened with the partition um, and I think that this was just absolutely wonderful the way that it is written is just like very witty um, and just very like compulsively readable um, and just like just a fast paced sort of like book you know uh, where you just want to read exactly what's happening and get to understand more of these people who you've heard so much about but you get to see like these small instances in their life and how that defines them as people um, and how then that defined what we what happened to us in like our history um, I just think that that as a concept is so interesting so yeah I definitely would recommend this book highly um, even though it is a history book just don't be like I don't know, put out by it uh, because it is just a very, very well written book. I wish more of our history books in school were written like this because Jesus Christ, we would be way more interested. So in the beginning, there were two nations. One was a vast, mighty and magnificent empire, brilliantly organized and culturally unified, which dominated a massive swath of the earth. The other was an underdeveloped semi-feudal realm riven by religious factionism and barely able to feed its illiterate, diseased and stinking masses. The first nation was India. The second was England. Number 11 on my list is Assembly by Natasha Brown. This is a debut novel and I still cannot 
understand how this is a debut novel because it was absolutely spectacular. It is a book of about just a little more than 100 pages and it basically speaks about this woman who has gotten some bad news uh, but she is on her way to her boyfriend's house in like the countryside with his parents etc she is black her boyfriend is white and comes from like old money um, and through this process she is reflecting on like her life but also on like colonialism and about like just being a person of color in this world and especially in England and what people expect of you and um, just so much more in terms of like colorism and racism and just all of that sort of stuff and just to be able to talk about all of these sort of things and um, put it into this hundred paged book um, just absolutely blew me away uh, personally. I know that there are some people who have not quite liked this book as much as I did uh, though I absolutely was in awe of the writing and just the way that she smushed so much of like all of these topics into one freaking book um, of a little more than 100 pages and um, yeah I just can't wait to read more from Natasha Brown because if she can do this with 100 pages what will she do with 300? That's my question. But it's there. Dread. Every day is an opportunity to fuck up. Every decision, every meeting, every report. There's no success, only temporary aversion of failure. Dread. From the buzz and the jingle of my alarm until I finally get back to sleep. Dread. Number 10 on my list is a series, but in particular, I want to talk about volume number three of Heartstopper uh, because I absolutely fell in love with this series. I read it this year. I have given it to a friend of mine, hence I don't have the books with me, but I loved this book. Essentially, we are following Nick and Charlie and their friends. They are in school. Um, some are out and queer, some are not. They are dealing with high school stuff. They are dealing with like relations and family stuff at home they are dealing with mental stuff they're dealing with so much but they are all such great friends and the way that they come together and the way they support each other was just such a sweet sweet story um, and I absolutely fell in love with all of these characters I think um, volume 3 was my favorite because they go off to like Paris and then the way um, just like I love the stories that came together because it wasn't only about Nick and Charlie but it was also about their friends and all of their like issues and all of that as well and their love and I just I just loved all of it um, and and I really really appreciated it so this was a book that just gave me a lot of joy um, and happiness in my life and the series as well um, so yeah this is why it's my number 10 of this year. There's this idea that if you are not straight, you have to tell your friends and family immediately, like you owe it to them. But you don't. You don't have to do anything until you're ready. Number nine is the fourth or fifth book in the Wayward Children series for me, and that is In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. I loved a lot of books from the Wayward Children series this year, but however, I think if I had to pick one, I think this one was my favorite. Um, and I know that many people have different favorites, but this one was the one that spoke to me the most, um, because essentially we are following this person called Lundy, who we initially meet as a teacher um, at this wayward school and let me tell you what the wayward school is essentially the wayward children series is about these children who come to Eleanor's school for wayward children uh, where essentially all of these children have gone into different doors and gone into different sort of worlds which were suited for them um, and they have found themselves come back into reality and now either want to go back or are traumatized by what's happening uh, but yeah all of these people in this wayward school of children um, um, want to go back to their worlds um, and yeah we essentially through the books meet all these different um, children and see their adventures in either the worlds that they were in or back in the wayward children's school um, and I just absolutely love this one this one in particular was about as I said Lundy who is a professor or a teacher at the school um, and it's about how she goes off as a kid to the goblin market um, and what I loved about this was it wasn't about the adventures but also more about like what happened post these adventures and how they dealt with it. She had a very loving parent, her father, her relationship with like people in general was something that like really stuck out to me for this one um, and I think that 
I am a person who's like a highly logical person. So this was a logical world. So it like stuck with me. Um, and yeah, I think that this book was absolutely well done. And I really, really loved it. And it stuck with me for, well, so long, so far. It read it in Jan, so. She discovered the pure joy of reading for pleasure and was rarely, if ever, seen without a book in her hand. Even in slumber, she was often to be found clutching a volume with one slender hand, her fingers wrapped right around its spine, as if she feared to wake into a world where all books had been forgotten and removed and this book might become the last she had to linger over. Number eight on this list is The Swimmers by Julie Otsuka. This is, again, a short, slim book um, which is an interesting one essentially in the first chapter or so we are told of various people um, who go to swim in a swimming pool um, in down underground somewhere um, and slowly people have realized that there is a crack in the swimming pool and it's how everyone sort of reacts with to it. So initially in the first chapter or so we get to hear from the collective we. So it's like a whole like union of people coming together and how they react to this. And we also are introduced to this one person named Alice if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Alice is dealing with Alzheimer's of sorts like she's forgetting things. Um, but she finds great solace in coming to swim every day. However later on the swimming pool is closed and we get to follow just Alice as um, she is struggling with things. We get to see um, things from her perspective, from her uh, daughter's perspective, from the people at like the nursing home's perspective. Um, and this book was quiet, but beautiful and heartbreaking in like the most surprising sort of way. I have said this when I've, whenever I've spoken about this book. I read this book in pretty much one or two sittings and I finished the book. I kept it down. I didn't know why. It just made me sob. I was just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and there was no particular reason why but it just got me. Um, I think the writing of this as I've said is simple and elegant and beautiful and just it there's just something about that sort of writing um and just the way that this was told and the way that we've gotten to know these people i'm also a huge water baby um so i loved the first chapter where we got to like see this whole like swimming thing and people who love swimming and um it really resonated with me because i've seen these sort of people and like the way they react and talk and the way they swim and all of that sort of stuff so that really resonated with me as well um and this book was just absolutely amazing and i would highly recommend it your main activity, of course, will be waiting for the medication to kick in for the afternoon snack, French fry Fridays, your birthday, a single candle on a frosted cupcake at lunch, your monthly appointment with Miss Sharon at our in-house beauty salon, just a trim please, you will say, for the next phone call from your daughter, I'm fine, you will tell her, for any small act of kindness, a hand on your shoulder, a tap on your wrist, a hug, a squeeze, a wink, a nod, for someone to crouch down beside you and look you straight in the eye and say everything's gonna be all right to which the old you would reply you have no idea what you're talking about but last but not least the sweet oblivion of sleep number seven is in the dream house by Carmen Maria Machado this is a memoir so this is not the only like this is a second nonfiction on this list yes um, and essentially this is her memoir where she talks about her relationship that she had with um, her partner who was very abusive um, and we get to understand that through various short chapters so it says dream house as a something and then we get to see how that worked um, and this book was just so brilliantly written just I was a lot of people have told me over the years that this book is brilliantly written and then I read it and I was like yep yeah I see it um, obviously trigger warnings for people who have dealt with this um, I unfortunately have just a teensy bit so um, it brought back things but not in a horrible sort of way um but yeah it's just like verbal abuse physical abuse of sorts and just all the things that a person might deal with but it's not there in the very beginning in the beginning you're just understanding her as a person and how she got to be in this sort of like situation and i just thought that like it was so 
well done and so well written and just so descriptive and like atmospheric like you could just see everything around you um and just for her to be so vulnerable and write these things down was absolutely remarkable and amazing and just this is a brilliant book i can't wait to read more from um common um and look at me calling her common like she's my friend but yes um i just i just can't wait to read more from her and i am going to so yeah we can't stop living which means we have to live which means we are alive which means we are humans and we are human some of us are unkind some of us are confused and some of us sleep with the wrong people and some of us make bad decisions and some of us are murderers it sounds terrible but it is in fact freeing the idea that queer does not equal good or pure or right it is simply a state of being one subject to politics its own social forces to larger narratives to moral complexities of every kind so bring on the queer villains the queer heroes the queer sidekicks and secondary characters and protagonists and extras they can be a complete cast unto themselves let them have agency and then let them go number 6 is a book that uh caught me by surprise because i didn't expect to love this book the amount that i did um i bought this book on a whim because i love the cover and i heard of the author so i decided to pick it up and um i'm so glad that i did and it is the wife by meg vilit so this is a book um about a wife um of a famous author and as they are going to helinski to um for him to sort of receive a nobel prize of sorts um for literature and as she's going there she's thinking about how she wants to leave him and we get to see all of the things that sort of came in the way through their marriage and how they got together etc we get to see their story um through this book and just also some interesting things that happened um there's a twist that i thought was very obvious to be to be honest um but don't let that spoil your experience because the twist is obvious in my honest opinion but it's just the writing the writing is so good if i could i would highlight this entire book because it was so well done i also listened to the um audiobook which was also narrated excellently and just like i don't know i had such a great time with this book it was so well written um and just spoke of like these things about marriage and about friendship and about like being your own person and what that meant and all of that sort of stuff and being a woman in the world and just it just was so brilliant for me um and i just like the writing the writing was so good i can't even talk about it properly i guess but um yeah i think that this book deserves more recognition that it has it's already made into a fantastic movie which a lot of people have loved so doesn't really need more but i will still push this down people's throat so there we have it i wonder whether he might ever love me and how i might rush that love into existence okay so we have reached the top 5 and ranking the top 5 was honestly just so hard for me but i have figured something out and gotten this for you but uh number 5 on this list is chat through the dead or how everyone else knows this as the seven moons of mali almeida this book completely blew me away uh this was shortlisted long listed then shortlisted and then ultimately won the booker prize and it is so well deserved this essentially follows this queer photojournalist in sri lanka during the time of it's sri lankan civil war um and his name is mali almeida he wakes up in this like purgatory sort of place which sort of reminded me like of an sbi or a visa office essentially um and he is told that he has 7 days to get things in order he has to get his ear pierced or like looked at and he has to get like some form signed and um so like yeah you know like bureaucratic south asian stuff uh but he also realizes that he has 7 days where he can speak to the people who are still living um somehow or like get them to essentially find this cache of photographs that he has um that will reveal a lot of things about the current government um and the corruption and just the things that it's doing so he tries to go about 
doing this and through this journey he meets a lot of other dead people which is why it's called chats with the dead uh where he meets these people some people try to help him some don't we get to see a lot of like indian and south asian folklore in this we get to see like i don't know just a bunch of stuff and i just found all of these conversations to be super interesting um this is told from the perspective of like the second perspective so it's a lot of like you did this and you did that which might be like a detractor for this book but honestly i felt like that was the only lead detractor in this book um i just thought that the idea of like the afterlife and just like what you want to do with your life and what you want to be known for and like all of that sort of stuff was just so interesting and mali as a person was also so interesting um as as a character you got to see him um change his beliefs and his thoughts and all of that through these seven moons um and it was just a amazing ride i i felt personally um i was just swept up in this writing um and the way that like it felt sort of mad and crazy but also like so sublime and um like heartfelt uh so yeah so that's number 5 on my list um chats with the dead or the seven moons of mali almeida just what an amazing amazing read and uh, what a deserved winner of the booker prize do not be afraid of ghosts it is the living we should fear human horrors trump anything that hollywood or the afterlife can conjure number 4 in my list is the sum of the wild built or for the wild built by becky chambers uh this is the second year that this is on the list because this is actually a reread for me i read the sequel of the book that came out this year um and for that i decided to read the first book again and just i don't know this book just does something to me i just loved the way that it's written and the things that it has to say essentially we are following um this world where like the robots have risen up they've gotten like consciousness and they've decided that they don't want to be subjugated to the sort of life anymore so they walk up and walk away and the humans are like okay um and they are thus in a world where like we don't have like ai or artificial intelligence or any like robots or any mechanical sort of stuff and essentially we are following this team monk called sibling dex um who is fed up of their life and they want to do something so they decide to become a team monk and they travel um across this world that we have right now uh and they decide to go into the wild uh for some reason or the other and there they meet a robot which is like the first meeting between a human and a robot in centuries and this robot's name is Moscap and what Moscap wants to know is what humans want um and they go on this sort of adventure of sorts but what i loved most about this book was just their conversations uh not only conversations that uh, Moscap and sibling dex had but also just the things that sibling dex was going through was just very relatable um if you are a person who is like fed up of life and things that you're doing and you don't know what you're doing in life anymore and you just feel like confused and lost and like you feel unmoored then this book will be a balm for you um i feel like i have been like that for the past few years so uh this really did feel like a balm for me each and every time that i've read it um so even though this feels like sort of like a cheat uh of sorts but like it it's just such a good book that it deserves to be on this list so uh sam for the wild built is my fourth best book that i have read this year you keep asking why your work is not enough and i don't know how to answer that because it is enough to exist in this world and marvel at it you don't need to justify that or earn it you are allowed to just live all right top 3 here we go number 3 i have sorrow and bliss by meg mason this is a book that i have been looking forward to reading but also not looking forward to reading because this was shortlisted for the women's prize and it basically tells you the story of this 40 something woman named Martha who is dealing with a mental illness that is in quite named but uh really struck a chord with me personally um i am a person who has dealt with a lot of like mental health stuff in my life so i was a little scared to read a book with a person who is dealing with that and is um in the throes of it but this book even though it was a lot for me personally it 
spoke to me in such a beautiful way and Meg Mason just writes so stunningly um, and so wittily and funnily and wry sort of humor you know that's just the sort of thing that I love um, and through this book we get to understand more about Martha the, the main character and the people in her life um, she feels that like her marriage is ending um, to this guy named Patrick and we get to see him as well as the other people in her life and it's just a beautiful story about these characters in in this in this world her sister her parents her like aunt and uncle and just a bunch of other people but like mostly it's just them and we get to see more about them as people and how they change over the years and their thoughts and everything and this book just made me cry in one instant and made me laugh at the other instant and made me like want to hug the page because I loved what was happening on that page and then made me want to like slap the person it just made me feel a lot a lot of things um, and made me feel very very seen as well um, and that is why I absolutely adored this book in so many different sort of ways um, and I felt like this book was almost just like written for me so yeah um, this is my number three book and is it's just so loved so sorrow and bliss everything is broken and messed up and completely fine that is what life is it's only the ratios that change usually on their own as soon as you think that it's over it's going to be like this forever they change again right so the next two books could honestly be interchangeable uh, in terms of like its rank or place and um, it I would be okay with it it's just that today I feel like this is the rank that it should be in and this is the place that this book should be in so it's like this but like I don't know I, I have a lot of like difficulty choosing between these two books as my favorite of the year but um, for now I have um, in number two Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell this book was just absolutely stunning essentially this book is about this family of Shakespeare um, and in this book Shakespeare is not really named he's always known as the father the brother the husband whatever um, he's not named because the emphasis is on the family um, and we get to know about his family and how he had the son named Hamnet who uh, something happens to him um, and and how people have dealt with it but we also get to see how this family came into being so how he met his wife whose name is Agnes who's this amazing person who's sort of like witchy and wise and is like the sage sort of person um, as well as like his like other family be it like his parents or his other children and how they are reacting to things uh before and then after a certain thing happens and it's just so wonderful to like see this book this book is a lot about like grief and um death of a child and just like a bunch of things that like you should uh be warned for because like it can be intense but this book was just one of the most well-written books I've ever read in my entire life. Um, I felt like this was just, I don't know, like magic almost. It felt like magic woven into pages um, and I was just like consuming it. That basically is what it felt like. Um, the way that the grief is explained and the way that like these relationships are spoken of and how these people are sort of described to you and the like surroundings and everything. It just made it so real and magical and just unreal at the same time. I don't know. I can't really explain it. Um, but if you love beautiful writing, if you like interesting characters, um, if you like sad books, then this might be a book for you. This was definitely a book for me. Personally, um, I really, really, I don't know, it just spoke to me in so many different sort of ways. Um, and I absolutely loved it, which is why it's my number two. So hence we move on to my best book of the year. And that is If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. This book, I don't know where it is. I think I've lent it to someone. Um, but this book was absolutely stunning. James Baldwin is, of course, a brilliant writer who needs no introduction. But he's written books like Giovanni's Room and a bunch of others. Um, and is just 
a brilliant writer this book was then made into a movie which was also absolutely brilliant but essentially we are following two people Fonny and Tish who are in Harlem and are in love unfortunately Fonny um, is sent to jail for a crime that he did not commit and Tish is pregnant um, and we get to see how they deal with that we get to see their family their lives and how that sort of intersects in this like crazy sort of thing that happens and how they're trying to like basically make sure Sure that Fonny gets out and how they're dealing with this case that's been put on them uh, but not only that we get to see how they grew up and how they fell in love and like all of that sort of stuff and it's this sweet melancholic sort of feel to it with also like this harsh reality of like this thing happening to a person so in this book we get to see police brutality we get to see racism we get to see colorism we get to see families and how they can be so great and also so terrible we get to see all of these different sort of things in like a really short period of time in like about maybe 150 180 pages and i just think that that is the beauty of james baldwin that he can make you feel so much and explain so much to you in just such a little period of time just that is craft and that is magnificent um and i was just bowled over by this book it just made me feel so much for these characters it made me feel like these people were alive and it this happened in reality and I was just waiting to see what happened and um, it just made me fall in love um, I think and I just I don't know I think that that's why this book is my favorite of the year um, there just can't be a book better than this but to be fair all of these books on this list be it the best of the best or my honorable mentions were absolutely stunning i hope that you got some good recommendations from this also please remember to check out my translated ones because that also has some amazing recommendations and some amazing books in that list so do check that out um meanwhile i hope that you are subscribed to me and like will look at my other videos as well i have a few other videos coming your way this month so that will be exciting um and yeah i just hope that um you have a great 2023 um you continue following me if you aren't already and um just like i'm excited to have a good time with y'all on on this channel and just in general so yeah that's uh that's all for today thank you so much for watching i will see you in my next video bye